Hello and welcome to the Carolinas Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admission Officers Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. We're really excited that you're here to hear about six awesome schools. We have a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. That's one reason why the Q&A button is so important. You can direct your questions to a specific school or uh, to all of the schools to answer the representatives to weigh in on um, and share more information. This is just one of many different sessions that are happening, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions in future months. Um, we hope that you will also be excited to know that this presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week's time at the same website where you register, strivecn.com slash Carolinas. You're going to be able to find not just this presentation, but all of the programming so you can check out and learn more about amazing schools um, across our region and the country, and even internationally too. All right, well, I'd like to now welcome and turn it over to our presenters. Our first school tonight kicking us off is going to be Concord University. Alan, Concord, great. We've got the screen share, but we can't see or hear you yet. All right, there we go. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Are you going to be um, expanding yes, I am your screen? To, I am going to uh, turn my camera on here in a minute. Great. I can uh, just wanted to make sure we didn't lose you there. Yes. Oh, you're fine. You're fine. Well, hello, everyone. I'm Alan Smith. I'm uh, with the uh, with Concord University. I have a brief presentation for you, of course, uh, on the admissions and enrollment process in the university overall. Uh, so I'll go ahead and get started. Um, so we are a small uh, liberal arts public university in Southern West Virginia, uh, in the uh, probably about 30 minutes below Beckley, right off of Interstate 77. Uh, and we have a little under 1900 students overall. Uh, founded in 1872 as a teacher's college that continues to be our number one most popular major, but we've added over 60 majors, minors and programs of study uh, since 1872. Um, and uh, we definitely have uh, one of our strengths of as a university is offering financial aid to Concord students. Uh, so that's something that we definitely encourage all of our students to explore. We also have four graduate degrees. Uh, those are all totally uh, on line. Now the admissions requirements um, for uh, this fall, for fall 2021, we are test optional. So basically what that means is if you do have a 3.0 GPA, cumulative GPA that is, then we can admit you without a test score. Or if you have a 2.5 in your core classes, uh, we can also admit you without a test score. So definitely uh, I still encourage students to take the test because it can help you out with scholarships. And uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later on. One of the hallmarks of the university, definitely our faculty over 110 full time, over 73% hold the highest degree in their field. Average class size is roughly about 13, uh, faculty student ratio about 14 to one. All classes are taught by professors, so we don't have grad assistants to teach courses. It's the type of place if you need help, you can easily get help. Many of them are gonna leave their home number and or their cell number on the syllabus, so they're very easy to contact, very tangible. And from my personal experience being a Concord grad, that definitely saved me several times and paid off for me in the end. And one of the uh, cool things about Concord is that we offer a lot of extracurriculars, so to speak. You're actually getting class credit for uh, these programs, but you have the opportunity to have your own radio show, participate in our news broadcast, audition for a play, be in the band, get class credit, uh, and without actually majoring in those programs of study. And you never know, you might find that you want to double major in one of those programs. Over 60 uh, student-led clubs and organizations, ranging from political organizations to faith-based groups, Greek organizations, you name it, we probably have it. But if we don't have a club you're looking for, our environment is very, very conducive to initiating your own club or organization. And we do heavily encourage you to do that. Most of our students are members of more than one organization. And I encourage you to, wherever you go to college, definitely get involved. Outdoor recreation is something our area is very well known for. Uh, here in Southwest Virginia, a lot of people have vacated to this area because they have uh, 
or found Concord because they have vacated to this area. But uh, skiing and snowboarding, you can do that in 25 minutes from campus. Uh, you can do whitewater rafting in about an hour from campus. If you're a diehard skier, we have a, a, a well-renowned ski resort called Snowshoe, about a couple of hours north of campus. People come from all over the country to go to snow, Snowshoe. Uh, golfing, hiking, mountain biking, you name it, several things within arm's reach. Uh, Pipeson State Park, only about seven miles from campus, and that's where our home golf course is. Speaking of athletics, we're in NCAA Division II. We're in the Mountain East Conference. If you're interested in playing a sport, we do scholarship athletes, and we have some who are walk-ons, but definitely reach out to the coach that you are interested to get that conversation going. We do have an eSports program as well, which also offers scholarships in our second year of the program, and our Call of Duty team is off to a great start. They actually uh, were, uh, they won first place nationally this past fall. And so we encourage you to reach out to whatever coach it is that you might be interested in. Approximately 700 students reside on campus, academic and organizational wings as well. Parking for all students, we allow you to bring a car as a freshman, $25 a semester to park your car. So uh, we encourage you to bring a car, but that's a picture of our newly renovated North and South Towers on the bottom. And if you come for a tour of campus, we can take you inside the residence halls to let you see. Uh, we're headed off by a company called Airmark for our dining services. All you can eat, very attractive to me as an 18 year old male, still pretty attractive to me as an adult. But if you come to, uh, to visit campus, we'll uh, take care of lunch for you in our cafeteria. But in addition to them, we have Subway and mini Starbucks uh, and uh, also Wingspan. So we always have a different uh, variety of options every day to choose from. Public safety, we have a state police trained force. That's our chief of police there. Mark Stella has been with Concord close to 30 years. They do have arresting powers, which I personally don't know anything about, uh, but they do. They will write you a parking ticket, so beware. But they keep a safe campus even safer, and they're a good group of guys. You'll see them in the cafeteria eating lunch with you and or maybe in the gym shooting hoops with you. Scholarships started a 3.0 GPA and a 960 on the, a on the SAT or an 18 on the ACT. Uh, they are awarded from the admissions application. We also have a Bonner Scholarship, which is community service uh, based, the only public school in the nation that has a Bonner Scholarship program. To add, uh, excuse me, tuition reduction for out-of-state students, uh, and there are three ways to qualify. It has nothing to do with what the mom and dad's income is, but there are three ways to qualify. That's a $4,000 reduction in your tuition, and we do offer some other additional scholarship applications on our website, such as the Foundation Alumni and a couple more. We are at some social networking sites, so follow us, stay up to speed on what's going on here at the university, and if you ever need anything from us, that's the staff. We work as a team. Uh, Trisha Ratford, our director, is actually the uh, contact for North Carolina. I work with South Carolina, but uh, definitely feel free to reach out to us. And thank you all for listening and good luck in the college search process. Thank you so much, Alan, for starting, a, starting us off and sharing about Concord. All right, our next school is going to be Glenville State College. All right, can you guys hear me? Yes. PowerPoint looks good. All righty. Okay, so hi, my name is Victoria Gum. I am currently a senior here at Glenville State College and I've worked in our admissions office for over three years now. Um, and if you're not familiar with Glenville State College, we are located in the central part of West Virginia. We're about an hour and a half south of Morgantown and an hour and a half north of Charleston. Um, here on the screen, you can see our three admissions counselors. We have Lexi, Ricky, and Larry. Um, they're just kind of here to help guide you through the admissions process, anything and everything you need. You can call, text, email them, anything, any time of the day. Um, they're always willing to get back with you as soon as they can. Um, you can either pause the video or and screenshot uh, so you have that information here for you. Um, here are our academic, um, just a quick list of our academic departments. Um, I'm just going to go over a few with you guys. So our criminal justice department is ranked number one in the state and number 14th in the nation. Um, our education degree program is our longest running on campus. We were founded as a teacher's college back before we became Global State and started adding more. Um, and our business program is probably one of the most popular programs that we have on campus. Um, the, all of the rest of these departments are super important. Um, I just wanted to touch on a few. Um, all of our programs have a higher chance of job placement immediately after graduation. 
We offer four-year, two-year, and fully online degrees. Currently, our classroom size is 17 students to one professor. Um, and any department faculty member is always willing to meet with you and help you through anything to help you get the best education that you possibly can. On this slide, you can see that we are expecting new and exciting things here at Glumble State. Um, currently, we have just partnered with Marshall University to provide three more graduate programs. Um, as you can see here, our athletic training and accounting are both master's programs. So you would do your first three years here at Glumble State, and then the next two would be at Marshall University. And also we offer a doctorate in pharmacy. And with that, you would do four years here with us and then three years with Marshall University. And we are also expecting a Barnes & Noble bookstore to be coming to campus um, here in the, in the near future. Um, that way you as students can get your books for classes here at a discounted price um, and they're available to you. Um, on this page, you can see that we are an athletic school. Um, that is a big driving point for a lot of students. Um, we have just recently introduced eSports and that is going really well for us. Um, we are an NCAA D2 school. Um, we're in the Mountain East Conference. Um, I'm just gonna highlight on some of our facilities. Um, in the bottom left, you can see that is the inside of our Waco Center. Um, it is home to our men's and women's basketball teams, our acro and tumbling team, cheer, boxing, wrestling. And attached to our Waco Center, we have a state-of-the-art weight and conditioning room that is laid out to mirror some of the most dominant collegiate programs throughout the nation. Um, in addition to our Waco Center, we have our I. Elmore Stadium, which is home to our football field and track, um, as well as the Sue Morris Complex, which houses our outdoor softball and baseball fields, as well as an adjacent indoor facility for athletes to use. So students always ask what's next for them. Well, the next step is just getting started and applying to college. So on the screen, we have a website link for you to go ahead and apply. It'll take you directly to our admissions application. Um, the application should take at max maybe 15 minutes, um, if that. Um, it is completely free, it's non-binding. Um, but when, if you do apply and when you do, um, just be sure to use this code that's listed on the screen, the hashtag GoPioneers to make sure it's completely free for you to use. Um, and then once you submit your application, one of our admissions counselors that I mentioned before will get with you and they can just still be in touch with you throughout the whole thing. So there's anything that you need to turn in, they are the ones who will get with you and get that for you. So as it says here, October 1st is when the FAFSA opens for you and that just helps us get ready with financial aid, talk to them so you can have the most affordable like college experience that there is. Um, our FAFSA code is listed here for you. Um, as the screen says, we are currently test optional, so you don't need an ACT or SAT score to be accepted by us. Um, we are one of the most affordable four-year institutions in state and out of state. Um, the amounts shown here on the screen are per semester, and that includes your housing, your meal plan, and your tuition. And then um, our campus is currently open, so feel free to come by for a visit, schedule a visit at the um, website listed below, or you could do a completely virtual 360 tour at the link below that. Um, we are having a two day open house event on April 10th and 11th that you're more than welcome to come to. And that weekend we are celebrating our spring homecoming. So it'll be filled, a day filled with meet and greets with our academic departments, our athletic coaches, and a lot of our student organizations. Um, so thank you all for attending tonight. That is all that I have. Great, right, thank you so much, Victoria, for presenting on Glenville State College. Our next school tonight is going to be St. John's College. Let's see. Slideshow. Hmm. There we Randall, go. If did you get there? Yeah, looks good. Thank you. My name is Randall Hollinsby. I'm an associate director of admissions and director of international recruitment for St. John's College. Um, we uh, have two campuses, which is a little uh, unusual. One in Annapolis, Maryland. Uh, we've been there since 1696. We are the third oldest college in the nation. 
oops, our Santa Fe campus, Santa Fe, New Mexico, at the tip of the Rockies, uh, began in 1964 when we just were too popular uh, for Annapolis, Maryland anymore. So uh, uh, that's my office right there. If you can see my cursor right there. Uh, we are probably most famous for the fact that we only have one major. Uh, if you come to St. John's, you will study liberal arts, real liberal arts, the way uh, Oxford and Cambridge do it. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's a four year all required program, four years of math, three years of lab science, four years of language, two years of ancient Greek, which I'm happy to speak for you if you like. Uh, two years of modern French, don't ask me uh, to do the French, uh, two years of music, and we read all or as many of the great books of Western civilization as we can in four years. Let's see. Um, all of our classes are discussion classes. Um, we read original text, uh, no textbooks at St. John's College. And um, we do have two graduate programs, the Eastern Classics program and a graduate version of our undergraduate program. But when you come to St. John's, you should plan on loving the program uh, and staying for that. Uh, we are smaller than most colleges, uh, even colleges that think they're small. We have uh, 450 students on each campus, uh, a seven to one student to teacher ratio. We are roughly 50-50 female male, 20% international, 20% of our population is students of color. And today we got some really good news we were added to NASPA's first gen forward uh, club. Uh, we specialize in adding first generation students to college. Uh, we are not division one, two or three. Uh, uh, you're not gonna find any uh, seven foot centers or 300 pound linemen. Uh, we concentrate on uh, uh, individual sports. If you are interested in things like fencing, uh, crew, uh, oops, sorry, jump back, rock climbing, uh, or uh, would like to consider joining our uh, nationally dominant croquet team. Uh, you should consider uh, spending some time outside of the classroom. We are also uh, a little bit famous for uh, being one of those expensive schools uh, that knocked down its tuition from 52,000 to 35,000 thanks to some generous, generous uh, donations from our alumni. It is uh, easy to pay for St. John's for most people. Uh, let's see, what does a St. John's College education prepare you for? About 20% of our students go into education, 20% into business. Uh, approximately 10% go into law and nearly that many into medicine. The other 40% go into all sorts of things. Uh, we produce a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of screenwriters and directors, uh, all sorts of uh, things that you might be interested in now or might need to learn about in the future. Uh, I went to St. John's uh, and uh, became a practicing architect. 
We are proud members of the CTCL group. And um, just a little bit of law school information. Uh, I don't have a slide for the medicine, but uh, in the last five years, everyone who applied to law school got in. Forbes, Princeton Review, US News and World Report, campus, and me. Great, thank you so much, Randall, for sharing St. John's College with us tonight. We've already heard now from three great schools and we'll have two more to go, but I just wanna make sure that our attendees remember that Q&A box. You can ask a question for all the schools to answer or drop something in there for a particular school to follow up on something that they shared and you wanna make sure to get those details down. All right, as you can see, uh, we've got Tori coming on screen right now and she's gonna be sharing Northland College with us. Awesome, thank you. And hi, yes, I'm Tori Shell, and I'm an admissions counselor for Northland College, and I'm also a Northland alum, um, and I work with students in the South and the Carolinas, so I'd be your admission, admissions counselor. Um, but let's get into it. So Northland was founded in 1892, and it's a community of about 600 students from all across the country and a handful of other countries as well. And we're located in Ashland, Wisconsin, which is right at the tip top of the state. We're um, about 40 minutes from Duluth and um, about 40 miles from the Apostle Islands National Lakeshore, Madeline Island, um, take a ferry all the way over there as well. And our main campus is just about 100 acres in size, but our borders are really just the beginning. We're right between the city of Ashland and about a million acres of national forest. Um, so it's a great place to be, and it's really beautiful this time of year as well. Um, the city itself it has great historic buildings, cozy restaurants, local craft and antique shops, um, a co-op movie theater, walking and biking trails, um, a little skate park, and of course the harbor. And it's all been shaped by a century of incredible history. We're also part of a proud tradition of liberal arts colleges, but we've got a little bit of a twist. We focus a lot on sustainability and social justice. And this building here is Wheeler Hall, which was the first to be built on campus. It's my favorite building. <laughs> uh, and today it hosts our communities programs and classes. Um, speaking of our programs, ours span the arts and sciences with multiple Northland specific programs like natural resources, outdoor education, sustainable community development, and more. With some new minors in sustainable agriculture, sports management, and climate change studies. We're also NCAA Division Three for athletics. We've got 14 different varsity sports, um, everything from golf to cross country, hockey, and lacrosse, and more. And I'm really excited and ready to get back out and see more games in the next year. Very excited. Um, and about 38% of our student body participates in these sports as well. Um, Northland's commitment to the environment and environmental education has been noticed around the US by some notable organizations. Um, we were recognized as a cool school by Sierra Magazine in 2019 and 2020 as well. Um, and we joined the Real Food Challenge. So we're working on being more sustainable um, and more local in our food choices. Um, we're also an Eagle League member with five other uh, schools across the country as well. And we divested from fossil fuels back in 2017. My favorite were Wisconsin's first bee campus as well. Another defining characteristic of Northland is our strong sense of community with tons of different clubs and organizations, three different student publications, a gear rental outpost that just got in paddle boards, which I'm really excited about, <laughs> um, and plenty of different events throughout the year. It's a great place to make friends and get a wonderful education at the same time. It's the kind of place where when you walk down the sidewalks, people will just say hi to you, even if you've never met them before. And our location really underwrites everything that we do. Central to our sense of place is Lake Superior, which is just 10 blocks off campus. Lake Superior is the largest freshwater lake in the world by surface area. And at about 350 miles long, it's roughly the size of North Carolina. Um, it's also so vast that it even creates its own weather patterns. Over the course of almost 130 years, Northland has developed a style of education that really thrives in this environment. Most notably by providing experiential learning in abundance, whether it's out in the lab, in the field, in the community, or in a ravine that runs through our campus. For example, our biology and natural resource majors spend countless hours out in the field. And 
Professor Michelle Small said it best when she said, I love that Northern College is a school where you can know your students by their names, where you can do your job in depth, giving 100%, expecting the same in return, and reaping the rewards as you see real progress and growth in your students. She's been teaching at Northland for about 47 years now, and she still holds that same opinion. And let's talk applications. It's totally free to apply to Northland, and the rec letters of recommendation are not required, nor are essays, so it's pretty quick to get through. If you haven't been able to take the ACT or SAT, that's totally okay. We're test optional this year, and the review takes about two weeks for us at Northland. We also take the Common App and things like Parchment. Let's talk about scholarships and aid. The total cost of attendance for Northland next year is about $49,000, though nobody pays that much. Our academic scholarships, which are assigned at the same time as our admission decisions, start at $19,000 per year. And there's no extra out-of-state out fee for students. Um, and be sure to send us your FAFSA um, to qualify for things like work-study and grants and loans and more. Um, and in conclusion, be sure to check out our socials to see more of what students are up to these days. Um, May term, which is my favorite term at Northland, is right around the corner. It's a one month consolidated course term where, you know, it's a little bit nicer, a little bit warmer out here during that time. So you can go out and do things like geology field camp, which goes out to Wyoming for the month to study rocks, um, field ornithology that goes around the Shawamigan Bay area to study birds, um, and plenty more. So be sure to check it out and feel free to drop any questions you have in the chat and I will pass it back to Jennifer. Thanks. Great, thank you so much, Tori. We enjoyed that presentation on Northland. All right, our next school up today is going to be Western Colorado University. Perfect, thank you so much, Jennifer. Um, my name is Brianna Clark and I'm with Western Colorado University located in Gunnison, Colorado. We are one of your four year public school options if you are looking at coming into the uh, Colorado area. Uh, so just a little bit about Gunnison to start. Uh, Gunnison is located right in the heart of the Rocky Mountains for about three and a half hours southwest of Denver. So I'll describe it to students if you're coming in from Denver that you go up the mountain, back down the mountain, and then there you are right on Western's campus. Um, and for our students located in Gunnison Valley, we have easy access to all things Colorado adventure. So hiking, fishing, camping, skiing, snowboarding, you're interested in it, you name it, we've got it. Uh, within 45 minutes of campus, we have access to two world-class ski resorts, the largest body of water in Colorado, as, um, which is known as Blue Mesa Reservoir, and then we have over 750 plus miles of single use or single trail, multi-use tracks uh, that are about 10 minutes south of campus. Uh, so lots and lots of adventure there for you. Um, but that surrounding area is not just all about campus recreation for our students, but it also serves an academic and research purpose for our students. 80% uh, of the lands around us is public, which means our students can get out and explore that environment. So our environment and sustainability students, recreation and outdoor education, and even our biology students are out taking samples from the river, uh, watching and doing long-term research projects on the natural uh, wildlife in the area and all kinds of other wonderful things. We like to call it nature's best classroom or our outdoor laboratory. A little bit more about the classroom experience at Western. We are a small university with 3,000 students total in our undergraduate and about 400 students or so in our graduate or master's level classes. Our average class size at Western is just 17 students, but we do guarantee you will never have a class with more than 66 students in it. So if you're looking for that smaller class size and that more intimate feeling, knowing that your professors know you on a first name basis, that they know that you're coming from out of state and will do a little bit extra to make sure that you're finding your home away from home at Western, uh, that is what we are all about at Western. Also with having only 17 students in that classroom, it gives us the great opportunity to do hands-on activities, research and learning opportunities. So it's not just lecture all the time. Speaking of those academic majors, we have over 100 different programs that our students can get involved in. Some of our most popular ones are business administration, environment and sustainability, recreation, outdoor education, and biology. But a few of our other programs include exercise and sports science, uh, wealth of pre-health or pre-med programs. We also have mechanical engineering and some accelerated degree programs or three plus two, where you can work on getting both your bachelor's and your master's degrees in five years. 
Uh, but actually our most popular major for our students coming in freshman year is our undecided or exploratory program. Uh, so we give students that opportunity to explore what you want to do rather than knowing what you want to do with the rest of your life when you're 16, 17, 18 years old. Uh, at Western, we are very much dedicated to the success of our students. Part of that college education, it only pays off if you graduate with that degree. So we want to help our students with that as much as possible. We offer math and tutoring services, as well as academic advisors, career services, and we have an EPIC mentor program. Our EPIC mentors is experienced peers initiating connections. Every incoming student at freshman is assigned to an upperclassman mentor, and they are your person that you know for your entire first year at Western. So not just orientation weekend or a couple weeks after that, but all the way up until you start your sophomore year. And our students are finding some real great success within that mentor program. All right, definitely need to touch base on the cost of an education at Western. So for our out-of-state students coming to Western, our tuition is coming in at just under 19,000, where you can see the national average for an out-of-state tuition is coming in at 23, um, at around 23,000 or so. So we're coming in well under that national average. And especially if you're looking at Colorado or one of the resort kind of destination areas like Gunnison, uh, that is a very affordable out-of-state tuition. 80% of our students are receiving some form of financial aid, but 100% of our students who apply to Western are considered for a merit aid. So how are students considered for a merit aid? Um, it's easy. It's based off of your GPA and test scores if you send them, but we are test optional. Any student who has a 3.35 GPA or higher is automatically going to receive this base and merit scholarship worth about 8,000. Uh, our ridge line coming in here at about a 3.75 GPA is a 9,000, and that $9,000 scholarship just cut our tuition by almost in half. Uh, so really great opportunity there to help offset your costs. We have a whole bunch of other scholarship opportunities for our students, including program-based ones, as well as ones for first-generation students and some other opportunities. We absolutely want you to come on out and experience Western for yourself. We have been very fortunate that we have been able to host in-person visits for this um, entire last year. Uh, so if you want to come out and check out Western for yourself, please do. Just go to western.edu slash visit to schedule that uh, campus visit day that works for you. But at the same time, we understand that traveling is always not the easiest thing. So we have a whole host of virtual events where you can experience and learn a little bit more about Western. Those events are at western.edu slash recruitment events. Real quick on the application process, uh, we are on rolling admissions, so there is not an application deadline for you. We are test optional, so you don't have to send those in. And there's a $30 application fee, but if that is a hardship for you, you can always use the code GOWESTERN2021 to waive that. Uh, that is a quick snapshot of what Western is all about, and my contact info is there on the screen. So if you have questions, please just let me know. Great, thank you so much, Brianna, for presenting on Western Colorado. All right, we have uh, just a few minutes left together. I want to make sure that our attendees get a chance to think of any last questions they might want to uh, ask. And if any of our representatives want to share any contact information in the chat, um, that we can get that out there and attendees can, can copy, paste, and grab that. So um, while we're doing that, I would love to invite everyone, as you can see, popping back on screen. And we're going to answer a round robin question together. Uh, we'll go in the same order that you presented. Uh, tonight. So we'll be starting with Alan from Concord University. I'd love for each of you to share a favorite event or campus tradition, something that just gives a little extra insight into that student um, experience and is um, unique and just really special to your community. Um, Alan? Well, yeah, sure. Uh, at Concord, one of the things I guess you could say is a tradition has been for years. There is a uh, kind of a centrally located place on campus that we call the Valley. And uh, lots of miscellaneous recreational activities happen there. We have a sand volleyball court, people pass a frisbee around. Uh, but when it snows, there's, there's a big hill, obviously, because there's a valley. And so a lot of the students and even some of the kids maybe who actually live in the, in the nearby community will come to the hill, ride down that hill in sleds, trash bags. Uh, we don't have cafeteria trays now, but when I was a student, we did. I'm not saying that was a vehicle I used, but students in my day used that cafeteria tray for their vehicle. So anyway, what happened at Concord stays at Concord. But anyway, that's one of the traditions. You, you, I, we've actually seen uh, kids take canoes down the hill. So it's, it's a fun time. Victoria, 
So here in Glumbo, we um, have, well, like it's a folk festival. So it happens every fall around the time of our fall open house. So it's just people from all over the state, all over the country come in. They kind of jam out in the middle of the street. We shut down Main Street. Everybody comes. It's a good time. And then bouncing off of that, we do, we are like the first college to offer a four-year scholarship in, or four-year scholarship degree in uh, bluegrass music um, in Appalachian Studies. So that kind of just ties in all of the people who are interested in that come, they jam out, talk to all the advisors and just get to know them one-on-one. -on -one. So at St. John's College, you know, we're really old and uh, uh, we've had uh, waltz parties for years and years and years on both of our campuses. Uh, I know you think you can't waltz, but it's a lot of fun. Uh, we're going to teach everyone who wants to learn how to waltz, um, how to do it. Uh, and 1696 uh, is so old, the waltz was relatively new uh, when we started uh, the college. Yeah, my favorite event at Northland is the Everybody Party, which is at the beginning of each year. Um, so all the first year students and new transfers get welcomed up onto campus with a big Irish drum. Everybody lines up and like high fives them. It's very corny. Um, and then all of our clubs and organizations will cut out their like tables and that kind of stuff on the main mall. The sailing club will bring their sailboat up on its uh, trailer on the mall, which is ridiculous, um, but lots of fun. And um, then it's live music, local food, that kind of stuff. And yeah, always fun. <laughs> Um, for us at Western, the mountain that is in the picture behind me is Tenderfoot Mountain, or we call it W Mountain, um, and it is visible from campus, so anywhere that you're at. So one of our fun traditions every year during homecoming and during all of the festivities that are around that, we'll actually light that W on fire uh, and just have a nice little bonfire thing that's happening uh, and really enjoy that part on there. Um, it's super safe. We've been doing it forever, but that's one of the fun things we do every year. I love hearing all of these traditions and events and it's just so fun and I hope that everyone who watches this and is thinking, oh, I want to go check that out and maybe go look online, Google it and think, can I see myself on campus um, and being a part of that, which I think is what is magical is that every campus has really cool and unique and special events and programs and traditions um, that, you know, tie the generations. All right, so we are reaching the end of our time together today, and I just first want to thank all of our representatives. You did a wonderful job representing your schools, showing those facts and figures, but giving that insight to the student experience in and out of the classroom and your passion for these opportunities. Um, and that is, you know, what makes this so fun for all of our families and students to get to see that insight. We hope, though, this was short. This is just your sneak peek. So for anyone watching, I hope that you feel inspired to learn more, reach out, ask questions. These admissions counselors are your biggest resource and they're here to help you navigate this process. There's no question too small. So head to those websites, send them an email and start to discover more about what could be your next home. When you close your window tonight, there's gonna to be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback that you can provide. Also, this is just one of many different sessions that have been hosted for students from North and South Carolina. We hope that you will consider um, heading to that same website where you register, strivescan.com slash Carolinas, to find this session's recording as well as all other session recordings, and to keep an eye out for programming happening for you later this spring. Thanks again, everyone, for joining us and taking the time today. Best of luck in your college search and decision process. Good night. <laughs>